Well, good day! So we got another awesome DC Comics episode for you. And today we're talking about The Flash! From the classic 1990s series. The series that got me to buy a couple of Flash comics in the process, starting with this one. As always, let's recap the episode itself, and then we'll get into the whole rigmarole after. So, Alright, let's go! Okay, so we are starting off in Intelligent Labs. We got Dr. Jason Brazell and his business partner, Ted. They have been cloning humans and have been trying to recreate the Flash. They figure it would be really awesome for every business out there to have these really fast couriers. Things can get done so much quicker and more efficiently. Wouldn't that be awesome? But not so awesome because every single time they clone someone and they try to run them through the rigors of the Flash process, they just dissipate as if there are some Jedi who just died. Dr. B realizes that human DNA cannot withstand the rigors of the Flash hood so they need to get the Flash's DNA because his has been altered and so they do they false alarm a bomb scare at the train station Flash is like a really awesome guy so he goes there to try to find the bomb but it ain't there this really slow moving robot totally sneaks up on him and cuts him up real good like he's bleeding his DNA on the floor which Dr. Bazell just grabs and tosses that into his uh, cloning machine and BOOM you suddenly have this grown ass adult but only physically grown up, mentally still a child. He has to learn everything from scratch. He still wants to go out and play in everything. So they give him a name, Pollux, because that was one of the twins in ancient Greek religion. And it just sounds poetic, I guess. You know, calling a bab would have been pretty good too, but whatever. They give him a really awesome looking suit too. It looks just like the Flash's suit, but instead of being red and gold, it's blue and silver. Just in case we need to tell the two apart at some point in the episode. So while Pollux is learning, he's like, you know what? I'm a kid. I want to go outside and play. I don't want to do this homework all day long, man. So he busts out. He goes to a playground and accidentally wreaks havoc all over the place. It just so happens that Dr. Tina McGee and Barry Allen are walking by and see this happen. And Barry's like, that's not the Flash. I'm the Flash. What the hell's going on? They go to investigate. Flash gets knocked out. Tina meets up with Pollux and is like, what's going on? Who are you? He's like, I just want to play. She is totally perplexed by Pollux. But then he takes off because Dr. Brazell doesn't want him outside like a hovering parent. So of course, Tina and Barry kind of figure, yeah, you know, he's grown, but he he's really a kid. And he is at that kid stage in his life where he's like, who am I? Where did I come from? Dr. Brazell is just like really annoyed for some reason. I don't know why. Snaps at Pollux. You're just a clone. You came from nowhere. Just mean stuff, right? So like, of course, no kid wants to hear that, especially if they got super speed powers. So Pollux goes in a tizzy, accidentally kills Ted in the process. So he takes off again, gets some fancy clothes. He wants to meet up with Tina again so she finds out where she works. And he's all like, hi, I love you. Here are some flowers. Let's hang out again. Of course, she's a little bamboozled by the whole thing. She gives Barry a call like, hey, your twin is here. Um, I don't know what's going on, man, but come on down. At this time, Barry was investigating Intelligent Labs and found out their whole plan. Originally, it was to clone couriers for businesses, but then Dr. Brazell realized he could make a lot of money by making an army of these things. Like he's a Kaminoan making the Grand Army of the Republic for Jedi Master Sifo Dyas. That didn't turn out too well, and I don't think Barry wanted that to happen either. So he goes to Tina's office, confronts Pollux, but then Pollux just steals his identity. Takes his ID, takes his badge. He's like, yeah, I'm Barry Allen now. Meh. So then we go to the scenes which you would have expected to be in there. Pollux goes to Barry's office, pisses off his boss, Lieutenant Garfield, almost gets himself suspended, and pisses off his best friend, Julio, whom Barry accidentally pissed off earlier in the episode. Ah, oh, just a bad day for someone who looks like Barry. Or is Barry, I guess. So Pollux goes back to Intelligent Labs to confront Dr. Brazell. And Dr. B is like, you were a mistake. I gotta kill you. Shoots a bullet at him, but Pollux catches the bullet and throws it back at him super speed. Like he might as well have been using a gun. Dr. B is down. So the Flash and Tina show up. 
And they're like, yo, Pollux, man, we, we want to help you. Like, you don't understand your powers, man. Like, just come with us. And Pollux is like, screw that noise. I've already had people control my life. I'm not going through that again. So then, of course, they fight. Luckily, they're wearing different colored costumes, as was prophesied, so we can see who's who. Barry actually gets worn out. He's been stressed for a long time, and it just gets to him. So he's up against the ropes. That's when we find out Dr. B is not as dead as we thought he was. He shoots his gun at the Flash, but Pollux jumps in front of the bullet to stop him, and sadly dies in the process, and fades away like Yoda. Man, so it's a pretty sad ending. Barry's pretty bummed out. He essentially watched himself die. But from an episodical TV series point of view, it wraps things up really nicely that you don't have to worry about in the future. So on that point, I guess it's good. But just the tragedy ending for our friend Pollux. And that is where this fantastic little story ends. <laughs> Oh man, so like I love everything about that series. Like it has so much 90s charm to it. Like it's so, ah, oh, like the fashion, the aesthetics, the whole tone to it, everything was just, oh man. I don't know how this series only lasted one season, but it was an awesome season. And this episode is probably my favorite out of all of them. Like it was just so good. It's always charming when you see an adult actor kind of portray a child basically and having it still pretty believable. Like, and with Paradox, he's not really a true villain. He's more of a tragedy story. Like he was just caught up in someone else's nefarious plan for evil doing. He just happened to be the first cog involved. But in the end, he has the heart of a hero and he saved the day without saving himself. So even though it wasn't the most in-depth script ever written, you know, it still had great action, great action sequences, it had great kind of character developments and whatnot. Yeah, like I said earlier, just full of charm and just amazement. Great episode, great TV show. Definitely check it out, like I highly recommend it. And other than that, uh, let's go talk about some other things about The Flash. Okay, so let's go to the very beginning of The Flash. So our hero here first made his worldwide appearance in Flash Comics number 1, January 1940. Dude's looking pretty fly in his slick uniform there and his fancy hat. And his alter ego was Jay Garrick, college athlete. And a pretty sure pretty nice guy. Of course, that was in the golden age of comics. As we moved into the silver age, we got quite a reimagination of the character he got a brand new uniform and a different secret identity no longer jay garrick he is now barry allen so that's right the same one from the tv show here same thing he's a forensic scientist he's a police officer and pretty snappy dresser when we got to i guess what was originally known as the modern age of comics i guess would be the bronze age now you did get a new flash and of course that was wally west he took over the mantle in 1986 with crazy this is on Infinite Earths number 12. Later on, 2006, Barry Allen's grandson, Bart Allen, he became the Flash in The Flash. Fastest Man Alive number one. And then DC Comics did a whole bunch of reboots. They have gone back to Barry Allen as our main hero. If we shift over to the antagonist of the story with Pollux, so he is not a character that existed in the comics, but there is a speedster villain. His also oh original name would be Reverse Flash, and he first popped up on the radar in The Flash number 139, and that would be in 1963. He is not a clone like Pollux. He's actually from the 25th century who became obsessed with Barry Allen. And unlike Pollux, he doesn't look like Barry Allen, but he did have plastic surgery to look like Barry Allen after, so that obsession kind of went a little far. You know the only thing that kind of bugs me about the guy is his name. Like, Reverse Flash? Come on, there's gotta be some other better names than that. Like, like what other same powered villains do you have in the DC Comics universe? Like, with Superman, you have Bizarro. That sounds cool. With the Green Lantern, you got Sinestro. So with the Flash, you could have Speedo. Actually, yeah. Okay, I, I just I just heard what that sounds like, and yeah, uh, Reverse Flash sounds so much better. So. 
Okay, so quite some time in the DC Universe when it comes to TV and movies, things were really cheesy and campy. You could really thank the Batman 1960s show for that. And of course, the ever amazing Super Friends TV show had a little hand in the campiness as well. But suddenly, in 1989, came along the new Batman movie. And things got so much darker and grittier. It was suddenly super awesome to be a DC superhero. You didn't have the spandex uniform, you had this wicked awesome rubber suit. There was such a different tone to the show. It was kind of more focused towards adults and it was like really awesome. So when they were making the Flash show, they realized they had to follow in this same kind of vein. So again, no spandex and they made a really awesome kind of latex suit for the guy. It was still a lighter tone than Batman but still kind of had that grit to it. Had a bit more of that realism to it than previous DC TV stuff. And even the whole kind of gothic theme like Flash's hometown of Central City did have a bit of a gothic vintage look to things, albeit a whole lot brighter than Gotham City. And of course in Batman 89, the musical score was written by Danny Elfman who did a phenomenal job. Like the soundtrack to that movie with Prince was like awesome, but even the musical score, like one of my favorite freaking albums ever. And I'm not even kidding, man. I would never lie about that. But they kind of keep the same thing for the Flash theme. They did hire Danny Elfman to do that as well. That's why it kind of sounds a bit similar to the Batman theme. And still really awesome. So all of this together really made a really successful TV show that, well, only lasted one season <laughs> before it was cancelled. But man, what a season! We didn't see a real live action Flash again until 2014 with the Flash, part of the Arrowverse. Of course, the same thing. It was Barry Allen again. He was the forensic scientist, Star Labs, blah, blah, blah. The really awesome thing in it, though, is the actor who played the Flash from the featured episode here, John Wesley Shipp, he did have a recurring role in the new Flash TV series where he plays Dr. Henry Allen, Barry's father. So whereas the 90s Flash show and the Arrowverse Flash show are in different alternate realities, they still had that connection that worked so well like good on them and if that wasn't cool enough for you they also explored other alternate universes on the new flash show and on earth 3 they still had the golden age flash jay garrick and within the whole multi-universe realm that jay garrick is a spitting image of henry allen his doppelganger if you will so that means that john wesley ship returned as the flash but a different flash from a different world so as big of a fan of the 90s Flash show than I am to actually see him as the Flash again, even though it's a different Flash. Man, that is top drawer stuff. And if that wasn't good enough, in the Arrowverse, they did have the Crisis of Infinite Earths event where it was a massive crossover with all the current characters, plus a multitude of characters from past DC Comics TV shows and movies, including the 90s version of the Flash. How awesome is that? Along with that, Amanda Pace also returned to reprise her role as Tina McGee. Also making a cameo is Julio Mendez, aka Police Chief Mendez. It's just amazing to see them again, but not too sure if we'll ever see them again. In the cinematic realm, we did get the Flash as well. Of course, he made his first cameo appearance in the 2016 movie Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. He then got his much more flushed out appearance in Justice. Justice League in 2017, and of course he got a much, much, much more flushed out story in the Justice League Snyder Cut version in 2021. If you haven't seen that, like, do it. He will be getting his debut cinematic standalone movie in 2022, and the future is looking pretty bright for our favorite speedster. Unless your favorite speedster is, you know, a mutant from that other comic company. So, huh. I don't know where it's going with this, and I don't know how to end the sentence, so, um, hmm. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just stop talking. <laughs> right on, and there you go. So, thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it as much as I did making it. Also, feel free to check out the source material that I featured in this video. And if you want to leave a comment on anything you may have liked or things I might have missed in this, you know, feel free to do so. Or anything else, you know, just to say hi. That's cool, too. And other than that, you know, uh, have a great day. Thanks.